We're in downtown Peoria here by the riverfront and I want to talk to you about some chemistry that happened here 50 years ago this summer uh, back in June of 1970. This area right here used to be uh, what would they call the Sears block. Uh, there used to be a Sears store and there used to be a coal-fired power plant in the area. Some interesting chemistry happened that summer and it, it happened at other times too but more spectacularly that summer. Uh, the coal-fired power plant was uh, burning coal and often in that coal there was a bit of iron sulfides uh, like pyrite and marcasite. I have uh, a fossil I pulled out of a, a coal near a coal seam and it has some marcasite in it. If we look real closely here, perhaps you can see the sparkle of the golden color here in, in the marcasite, maybe right about there. Um, also sparkling right here. Okay, but it was an iron sulfide. Okay, and the what happened happens when iron sulfide gets in a uh, uh, burner of a, of a power plant and, and, it, and it gets burned up is uh, some interesting reactions here. For example, the iron and the iron sulfide reacts with oxygen in the air to produce iron oxides like, like uh, iron 3 oxide hematite and here's an unbalanced reaction showing that, uh, that uh, chemistry. Okay, now the sulfur in the iron sulfides reacts with oxygen in the air to produce sulfur dioxide. Okay, and the sulfur dioxide would then be catalyzed by reaction with the iron oxides, react with the oxygen in the air catalyzed by the iron oxides to produce sulfur trioxide. And the sulfur trioxide would react with water to produce acids. Some real simple uh, inorganic chemistry, non-metal oxides are acidic. They react with water to produce acids. In this case what we have is sulfuric acid. So what happened here in, in uh, 1970 was that this coal-fired power plant was uh, burning along here and it was raining ash on the nearby surroundings and it turns out that wherever the ash touched the uh, clothing that people were wearing was starting to get attacked. Uh, this was in particularly happened to those who were wearing uh, nylon stockings. Um, I mentioned that there was, a, there was a Sears store in the vicinity because there were stories that uh, um, people would have, get holes in their nylon stockings as, as the ash uh, touched the stockings. Stockings would all trashed and then they would go and run off to Sears to buy some more stockings and they'd walk back out and those stockings would start to fall apart. And what was happening apparently was the ash from the power plant, which probably had some iron oxides in it, would uh, uh, re uh, catalyze the conversion of sulfur oxides to sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide. The sulfur trioxide would react with moisture probably in the air through sulfuric acid. So everywhere the, the ash touched, it was leaving a little bit of sulfuric acid on the clothing. It was also attacking the paint job on cars. And um, I don't have any nylon stockings to show that uh, to you, but uh, I do have uh, some nylon clothing here, a uh, pair of shorts that has uh, had some sulfuric acid dripped on it <laughs> based on, as part of some uh, chemistry I was working on this summer. And you can see that it's uh, disintegrated holes in the clothing here. And <laughs> what we also have here is uh, some, uh, I believe this is cotton clothing. And you can see that uh, there are holes in the in the clothing here from uh, acid attack on the clothing. And um, whatever happened to that power plant? Well, it eventually got turned down. The, the company denied that it was their coal-fired power plant that was doing the damage. And I think the issue just kind of kind of dropped. But it wasn't too long afterward um, that that the power plant was eventually taken down.